have to get ourselves in a position to be led by the Holy Spirit in us. What is the real purpose of church? Do we come for a purpose? We will exalt Jesus Christ and what Jesus Christ accomplished. Hallelujah. Well, we could just continue to sing that song uh, and be tremendously blessed by it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because it, it's almost like the prayer that I want us to pray at this time. I want you to follow me in this prayer this morning. Father, my heart yearns to know. Father, my heart the person, the person of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit. More, deeply, more deeply and to experience, and to experience his, powerful his powerful personality. I ask you to reveal truths, to reveal truths and, grant and grant me understanding so I can cooperate, so I can cooperate with and respond to, and respond to the Holy Spirit's ministry. In my, life. in my life. Father, I desire, Father, I desire to, walk in the spiritual depths to walk in the spiritual depths and fullness, and fullness that, Jesus that Jesus made available. To me, when he prayed in John, me, prayed in John the, 14th chapter, the 14th chapter, that you would send the helper, that you would send the, helper the, Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, to indwell me. I ask you, I ask you to, open the door to open the door for me to embark, me to embark on, a path on a spiritual path that I've never been on before. Been on before. I, know I know that this is your will, is your will for, me. for me. So today, so today I, come I come before you boldly and confidently, and confidently to receive this very Gratitude and joy. I pray this, Father, in the name of Jesus. May your spirit that's indwelling me now be the guiding light in my life. From this day forth, my commitment to recognize and understand and walk, and walk with Jesus Christ, with Jesus Christ in, my life, in my life every day, every day being, led being led by his spirit. By his spirit. And, I and I thank you for it in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Hallelujah. Isn't Hallelujah. God good? God is so good. Woo! God is so good. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. You may be seated. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Praise God. This morning, uh, we're going to continue, uh, maybe uh, rehearse slightly, but continue with uh, our relationship, our relationship, the believers. We, we had Jesus' relationship just to kind of introduce the subject and uh, with the Holy Ghost. And this morning, we, and then Tuesday evening, we uh, had the uh, believer's uh, relationship with the Holy Ghost. And then we're going to continue this morning and uh, with this, with our relationship with the Holy Spirit. Of course, you understand that this isn't the final word on the subject. This is an introduction to give us places in our personal study time uh, to inquire and, uh, and to uh, uh, continue, multiply the, uh, the results thereof of, of the subject matter, which is our relationship with the Holy Spirit. God requires Israel, or required Israel, to keep the law while operating in faith 
for their promised future Messiah and King. They had to function in faith in that arena. For us, God requires the body of Christ to operate in faith as we look to the Holy Spirit for guidance every day in every situation of our lives. So they had their faith endeavor, and now we have our faith endeavor. And there's a difference between faith under the law and faith in the dispensation of grace. When they had to have faith, when they had to have faith in the promises of Jesus, and we must have faith and confidence in the Holy Spirit. Jesus, at the time in his physical ministry for three and a half years, was presenting to uh, Israel under the law the presentation of uh, present and future. He was presently there with them, encouraging them, but also he was speaking into them future. So here we have today, we, we are concerned, we should be concerned about present day and future day. Our future is uh, secure. And a lot of Christians spend more time thinking about the next life than they do about this life. The Holy Spirit's been given to us to put us over in this life, not the next life. Amen. Amen. This life. Amen. Okay? Now, a lot of what we're going to be encountering in these days that we're living in is you understand the new world order. I personally believe from Scripture that we're the body of Christ to stand up against the new world order. See, the new world order is a foundation for satanic, for uh, the Luciferian, and for the Antichrist to come and take his position and rule the world for the period of time that he would have left after the church has been raptured. But before the church leaves, the Scripture tells us that there's something that's presently here that holds him in position. Amen. That's us. So we should understand when we're praying in other tongues, we need to direct a lot of our praying in other tongues toward our position to uh, not attack, but hold up and, uh, and secure our position against the new world order. The new world order, you understand, is an ungodly bunch of people. Amen. They can't be godly and be in there. They have to be ungodly. The only people that can stand up against the ungodly is the godly, which is the body of Christ. Amen. And so this morning we're going to, we're going to continue our, our endeavor here to, to concentrate upon uh, some scripture uh, with our relationship, the believer's relationship with the Holy Ghost, the believer's relationship with the Holy Spirit. Okay, in John 14, which we mentioned in our prayer, in John 14, we'll start with verse 16. And here's Jesus making this statement. He said, I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. And in that context of comforter, we find counselor, helper, and this is important, so don't, don't, I'm not trying to gloss over this. I'm trying to, there's more to this, but I want you to understand these these titles are important to us for us to recognize this because this is the identification of the Holy Spirit to us. Okay, this is who He is. Now listen, we're going to endeavor to show who He is and recognize we do not have to pray for this. This is already ours. You don't have to pray for the Holy Ghost to be your comforter. He's already your comforter. Amen. What you have to do? What do you have to do? <laughs> Somebody's giving away my secrets. Uh, well, well, let's do the, the whole, whole series of names, and then we'll find out how to enter in and how, what we have to do, okay? So what he is what? Counselor. He's our helper. He's our intercessor. He's our advocate. He's our strengthener. He's our standby. And th then Jesus said that 
He identified him, and then he said that he may abide with you forever. People just don't understand this because they think he comes and goes. No, no, no. Forever. Okay? Forever. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. (laughs) This new world order can't receive this. Okay? Because they see him not. They can't see him. Neither can they know him. But, see now he, he, he stops talking about the world and starts talking about those disciples that he was talking to, which incorporates us. Because uh, they, they cannot, because they cannot see him, neither can they know him. But you know him. This is the point. There's no reason for us not to know the, the ins and outs of the Holy Spirit. There's, there's no reason for us not to know him. Amen. So I did some uh, research on the internet, and there's a couple of places there. The first thing they said was, the Holy Spirit is not a person. I said, really? Really, the Holy Spirit is not a person. So I, that's as far as I'm going with you, because you don't know the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Holy Spirit is a person. Amen. Okay? So, so the, the gamma that's out there about what people believe about everything. So the, the whole point of this is to encourage you to shore up your beliefs scripturally. Scripturally, shore up your belief. The Scriptures identifies the Holy Spirit as a person. He's the third. He's he's part of the Trinity. He's part of the Godhead. Now, let me correct something I said last week or, or kind of bring more enlightenment to it. We don't need to try to separate the Trinity. In our, in our discussion with ourselves, which is the Holy Ghost, which is Jesus, which is the Father. We, we waste a lot of time going there because they're not separable. They're inseparable. So do not try to do something that can't be done. You can't separate the three. It's God identified with three identities. All God. So if what happens, if we're not careful, we start putting more emphasis on one than the other. They're not intentionally, but that's what we would do when you try to segregate or dissect them out. Then you start paying more attention. It's God. Amen. It's God. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is God. So here we go. Yet you know him, Jesus said, for he dwells with you and shall be in you. See, he wasn't in them yet. He was with them. But he was in them. Then verse 18 he said, I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. Now, who is he saying? He said, I. So this is why you have to be very careful here when you start trying to dissect Jesus from the Holy Spirit. Because here he tells you he's going to send you a comforter. And in in that comforter, he's going to be in it. Isn't that what he said? He said, listen, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more, but you see me because I live. You shall live also. And at that day, you shall know, listen to this, this is the day, okay? At that day, you shall know that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. So when you really want to get down to it, I don't believe you can separate the body of Christ From its position in God. 
Because the scripture says that upon redemption, we were placed into the body of Christ. And then we were raised by that same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead to be in heavenly places presently as far as God's concerned. This is the reason why we have to, cons- have to work on our, ourselves to, to get us into position that we can have confidence of who we are and where we are and what we are. Amen. Who we are is the body of Christ. We're not an old sinner saved by grace. We're not stumbling along in the dark and can't hardly find our way. That's not us. Amen. That's what a lot of Christians think about themselves, but it's not true. The Scripture says we are the body of Christ. There's only one of them. There's not two. There's one. The body of Christ is led by the Holy Spirit. Okay? Now, here's the whole point here. We're, we're, we, we don't want to get too far away from what we were saying a while ago as far as the identification of the comforter that is in us. Okay? He's in us. He was to be in them, but, but at that time when Jesus was speaking with them, he was with them, not in them. He's in us. In all the the positions that we said. He is in us. Okay? You understand what what I'm saying? He's our comforter. He's our counselor. He's our helper. He's our intercessor. He's our advocate. He's our strengthener. And he's our standby now in us. But to a lot of people, sadly to say, that means nothing. Why? Because they still have this attitude, and this is an attitude that we should never develop for ourselves. They have the attitude that God is going to take care of it. That whenever the situation occurs, and the counselor is in us, that when counseling time comes, the counselor will show up and start doing his counseling work for us because he's our counselor. Wrong. Wrong. You remember we opened this service this morning by describing the faith that's necessary for the old covenant and the faith that's necessary for us presently today? Yes. Okay. Okay. So the Holy Spirit in us is activated in his positions in us to accomplish what he's assigned to for us through the avenue of faith. So now somebody had given it away earlier, but we'll go to it. What does Philemon 6 tell us? what, What is incorporated in Philemon 6 for us to understand? Those things that we just understood that the Spirit of God is in us has to be declared just like all the other things are declared that we want to uh, have functioning in our life. For God to be God in us, we've got to recognize God as God, and we've got to have faith in God as God. For the Holy Spirit to be the comforter in us, we've got to recognize him to be the comforter in us, and we've got to declare he's the the comforter to us. Once we start to declare all the good things that are in us in Christ Jesus, our faith now becomes effective. In other words, whatever it is that we're declaring will become effective in our life because we're using the evidence of faith to bring it forth. Other than that, it's just there. It's obvious that the Christian community doesn't have a clue because there's no manifestations of the Holy Spirit in their lives. But yet he's there. The moment that a person was redeemed, guess what happened to them? They got sealed by the Holy Ghost. They got placed in the body of Christ. All these things happened to them spiritually at that time. Yes. 
But majority of Christians in, in the Christian community is waiting for something to happen that's already happened. They're waiting for something to happen because they're building their whole existence on feeling and emotions. Feelings and emotions are great and wonderful, but you can't build your Christian experiences on feelings and emotions. You have to build your Christian experiences on fact, the Word of God, whatever the Scripture says. If you receive, uh, if it touches your emotions, great and wonderful. But here's what will happen to you. If you build it on emotions in your sense realm, it'll be an experience. And you'll chase that experience for the rest of your life. And you'll miss God. Oh, you'll go to heaven, but you can't live victorious chasing experiences. Because the Holy Spirit can't do His work when you're chasing an experience. He can't be what He can't be in you what He's supposed to be in you. Not that He's not going to leave, He just doesn't get activated. Just like when you do not pray in other tongues, there's a lots of things that do not get activated. That praying in other tongues activates, causes to come to pass, causes to happen. Are you listening to me? Yes. Now listen, the Apostle Paul tells us that we do both. So you can't, we, we have a tendency sometimes to go from one ditch to the other. Okay, so we've been praying in our understanding. And that's, that's all we know is to pray in our understanding. Then all of a sudden, the revelation comes that we're to pray uh, in the Spirit. So we abandon this. We abandon the understanding because we got a better deal. We, we can pray in the Holy Spirit and get everything done. No, I don't think so. I think we ought to stay out of the ditches. I think Paul says we pray with both of them. We sing with both of them, and we pray with both of them. That's up to us to moderate. God's not going to moderate this for us. That's, that's the responsibility of the believer. So we have to learn and understand, receive revelation of our relationship with the Holy Spirit. How do we do that? I'm glad you asked. Okay. What is today? We do not need anything more than what we already have. Did you know that? We just went through a list of what the Holy Spirit is in us. There's nothing else that we need. It's all been given to us. But we haven't, we haven't arrived at that conclusion because we've gone to the wrong place to seek our revelation. We've gone to the wrong place to find the answers. We've gone naturally to find spiritual answers. And you can't do it. You have to go spiritually to find spiritual answers. But remember Jesus made a statement to Nicodemus at the time when he was describing the new birth? What did he tell Nicodemus? Nicodemus was a leader, you know, and he was supposed to have known better. Jesus, he came to Jesus after dark, remember? And Jesus was talking to him and he said, that which is spirit is spirit. And that which is flesh is flesh. What's Jesus telling us here? We're made up of three parts. We're made up of flesh and spirit. And for whatever the reason, the natural is tied to the flesh. The natural isn't tied to the spirit. And so that's up to us to moderate, not God. He's not going to moderate this for us. This is why we have to learn and understand and receive the revelation of our relationship and fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Because our relationship with the Holy Spirit is the key, is the real key to what's going to put us over in this life now. Not the future life, this life. We've received what we have need of, but when we have need, 
When we have needs, what do we do? Often we go to the wrong place for our help. We have a tendency to seek our help naturally, not from the spiritual, yielding to the Holy Spirit. Listen to me. Yielding to the Holy Spirit is more than when we are receiving something from God at the church in a healing line. Now, this is true, okay? A lot, learning to yield to the Holy Ghost is a revelation that all believers need. A lot of times people who are uh, attending these services, they're not from this church. And they haven't been taught anything about yielding to the Spirit of God or yielding to the anointing. They do not know about that. So when they are presented and they, they, they stand and the, uh, the minister anointed of the Holy Ghost lays hands upon them, they, the recipient, do not know how to receive. That's equal to unbelief. The Holy Spirit doesn't override unbelief to bring blessing. Now, the majority of this church, over the period of time, you have been taught the, the uh, proper reception and yielding to the Spirit of God. But, it, but it, the, the reception is the reception is necessary or the yielding is necessary for the reception. You understand what I'm saying? You have to yield to him. You can't resist him. Now, there are times that I've seen some demonstrations of the Holy Ghost that were on purpose because people deliberately were going, were resisting. I don't know if this person knew what she was doing or if it just, it, it, it just turned out to be that way. But what she was doing was resisting the power of God. And it just so happened that uh, Pastor Cheryl was ministering to her and, and the person, uh, this, this female, was, was resisting and she kept resist and then when she would resist she would draw away from the from uh, Pastor Cheryl's hand and Pastor Cheryl was just going to lay her hands on her according to the direction of the Holy Ghost but she kept pulling away and finally she got down in a position like uh, I called it you know in the military it's called duck walking you get all the way down and you have to walk like a duck well, she's doing this at the old church on Pival Road. And at the same time this is happening, when uh, Pastor Cheryl was, finally got her hands on this, on this person, I'm up on the platform watching this take place. And all of a sudden, something left this person. And it, to describe it would be uh, like a let's say, a four foot square silk cloth. Have you, or maybe it, was, it, was, it was large enough to be visible real good. So a four foot square silk cloth that had a knot in the, one end of it. Have you ever, be like children use them for flags and they run around and, they, and they're, they're they, they wave okay. So I'm on the platform this woman's down here, and at the same time when, when uh, Pastor Cheryl made contact with her, something flew out of her and went right past my head and went out the corner of the, of the ceiling at the old church. And it looked like a four foot square silk cloth that was, had something on one end of it, and it just went straight out the building. Now, whether that was causing this person to resist or not, I don't know. But there was a lot of resisting going on. So learning to, to, uh, learning to receive and learning to yield 
is part of the Christian experience. Okay? And so, uh, yielding to the Holy Ghost is more of that. This is part of it. This, this, is, this has to be understood. But there's more to this. There's more to yielding than in this part. See, we have to yield. We have to learn. First of all, we learn the voice of the Holy Ghost. And then once we learn the voice of the Holy Spirit, we have to make ourselves available to yield to Him. Because, listen, the whole idea here is not for Him to have a conversation with us. That's not the point. He's not going to give you a book report or sit down and talk to you about the weather. He's going to give you some guidance. So we have to put ourselves in a position. We have to get ourselves in a position to be led by the Spirit, by the Holy Spirit in us. Amen. So now we have to learn the difference between mental thoughts and spiritual revelation, because they're going to come through the same source. They're going to come up through your mind. Your mind's involved here. Your spirit doesn't take over and run your life. It's a corporation. It's a yielding to the, to the presence of the Spirit within you. And so let's go back to this uh, understanding of what Jesus said. He said, he's your counselor. The Holy Spirit in you is your counselor. He's your helper. Okay? He's your helper. He's your intercessor. He's your advocate. He's the one who strengthens you. And he's the standby. In other words, he's always there. He's not gone. He doesn't take vacations. He's there. The the whole point here is to acknowledge his presence is, is the major step in the right direction. On a continual basis. To acknowledge his presence. Continue. So he's inside of you. And he's not gonna he's not gonna be kicking you in the ribs to to let you know he's there. He's he, he, there got, there's gonna come a time in your in your uh, in your Christian life that you're going to have a re- such a relationship with him that you'll start to recognize uh, situations that arise. By his his presence in you, you're going to have a, 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 a what's the term I'm looking for? You're going to have a knowing. See, no, when you know something, it goes beyond explanation. You know that. A lot of times, you know something, and someone would want you want to. You'd explain how you know it. You can't explain how you know it. You know it. That's all part of the Christian experience. You know it. And the Spirit of God in you to lead you is going to require a lot of knowing. You know He's there. Why do you know? How do you know He's there? When there's no movement whatsoever, no encouragement, no nothing. Is he gone or is he there? See, most Christians don't realize that he's there. He's there because the Bible says he's there. Jesus said he would never leave you or forsake you. He's there. Spirit-filled people are filled with the Holy Ghost. He's there. He's not going to leave. He's there. Why is he there for? So that we can go around and say we're filled with the Spirit? No, there's a reason for it. It's supposed to have a major effect upon our lives. Okay, let's, I'll, I'll give you a real simple explanation. Redemption comes for you. The baptism of the Holy Ghost comes for others. Let's do that again. Redemption is for you personally. The baptism of the Holy Ghost presents you in a position to help other people. Amen. Amen. Spiritually. Not, not, we're not talking about 
paying our house payment and that kind of, that's, that's fine. You have to do that by the direction of the Holy Ghost. If you don't, we talked about this the other night, remember? You can't give addicts money. Even though they beg and they want it. And, and, and if, you, if you're, if you're, if you're, uh, if you're um, getting led by your conscience or your feelings or your emotion, you can, you can make a mistake and hurt people. The Holy Ghost will lead you in the right direction. But you have to trust Him and you have to get to know His. And, and the only way you're going to get through this is knowing your relationship with Him. Let me finish this up. Um, yielding to the Holy Spirit is more than what we see here. Giving the Holy Spirit His place in our lives at all times is yielding also. We have to learn to acknowledge His presence in our lives so that we can give Him His place. Proclaiming His presence is very necessary for us to receive what He has to give us. Setting forth the action of faith is necessary to the position uh, our, ourselves, to position ourselves to receive from the Holy Spirit. There's this coming, Philemon 6, that the communication of your faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. 2 Corinthians 4.13, this is one of my favorite scriptures. We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore speak. Uh, my, what a revelation. One of the good things that is in us to be acknowledged is the Holy Spirit. Some of, the, some of the things he does in us is to allow us to talk to God. You can't talk to God outside of him. Amen. Did you hear me? But people don't understand this. But let's go. Allows us to talk to God. He brings out mysteries and things that are never known in our minds that need to be revealed to us in our lives so we'll have knowledge to know how to ch change the course of things using the authority that we've been given through the name of Jesus. If we do not know, we can't stop it, which is the whole reason from the, from the beginning. Satanic forces is trying to keep us from knowing we need to know because we are the ones to stop it. God's not going to stop it. Isn't it kind of obvious around the world that God's not stopping things? And neither is the body of Christ because the body of Christ doesn't understand its position and its relationship with the Holy Ghost. So, what is the first thing that Pastor Cheryl declared? when Nancy Hall was under attack. Does anybody know the first thing that she said? You need to. You need to know, because you may have to reenact it. This is all part of this training process. Process. What did he, she say? No, 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 no. Not here, you don't. What was the idea behind this? situation. The spirit that came to steal Nancy's life right here in church, to, what, what do you think that would do to each one of us? Now this has been happening here over a period of time, over a number of years. This is not the first incident that this has happened. But you notice it never happens in the grocery store. Huh? It happens in church. Why? Demonic spirits understand that if they could pull this off in the church, it's going to affect your belief. It's going to shake you to the core. 
But it ought to be a rev- it ought to bring revival in your heart to the fact that Miss Cheryl said, "No, not here. You can't do that." And called Nancy back in her, her spirit back into her body, and you sat right there and watched it. Now you can say it didn't happen all you want to. That doesn't bother me at all because I was here. I know better. And I've watched it happen all the way from old Pineville. I watched it happen with Pete Caruso lying in the road. I watched it happen with Giles. Same thing. He was dead. And God raised him up. How many do you need? But why are they happening there? It's, there's, a, there's a reason for this. The reason is to shake you up. He could snuff out her life, steal her life, but what would he steal from you at the same time? See, they're thieves. They come to steal, rob, and to destroy. They want to destroy your life at the same time they destroy their, steal their life. No, 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 no. No. Not here. No. Not here. No, not here. How about at your home? You better be no, not there either. You have to stand tall. You have to stand up. That's a requirement to stand, stand, stand. When you've done everything, stand. We need to understand that this, you know, by the, they have the audacity to attack in church. Why not the grocery store? It wouldn't have the same effect there. You should receive the understanding of what's happening. Why we need to be led now more than ever. The comforter will not do it for us. That's not the comforter's job to do it for us. The Holy Spirit is in us to help us. Help us. Help us, help us. So we must learn our parts and his part. Faith is always the key. We must become aware of the greater one in us. If we would develop this understanding of his indwelling presence, we would be able to realize we have the source of all power dwelling in us. Now we're able to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit, our part. Believe and speak. Give him his place. Yield and obey. Honor and obey. Going to Psalms 103, verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is in me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities. Who healeth all thine diseases. Who redeemeth your life from destruction. who redeems your life from destruction. How does he redeem your life from destruction? When you go to Philemon 6 and you activate him to redeeming your life from destruction. Amen. As you read the scriptures, you should be finding places by the Holy Spirit's direction that you can engage Philemon 6, proclaiming out loud what belongs to you. This belongs to us. Who redeemed thy life from destruction, who crowns thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies my mouth with good things, so that my youth is renewed like the eagles. Hallelujah. That has to be continually Acknowledged, 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 acknowledged. And guess what happens? It starts to have an effect on your, on, from your spirit out. It starts to change situations from the inside out, not from the outside in. That's potions and lotions. That won't work. It's coming from the inside out. Inside, inside, inside. It's in there. Let's activate it. 
It's inside. Let's activate it. It's in you already, not praying for it to come. It's already there. You just let it go by the acknowledging of all the good things that are in you in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. This past week in my time of study was in reference to the corporate anointing. I believe, as Kenneth E. Hagin believed, the corporate anointing is the greatest anointing. I believe that's why we've had the results in this body of believers that we have. To get spiritual results takes spiritual prayer. Spiritual prayer takes praying in the spirit. Praying in tongues. So I want you to join with me today for just a few moments. Uh, I attended Winter Bible Seminar. Brother Hagen used the same passages year after year after year after year after year after year. Same passages. So our prayer key scriptures, we start in Jeremiah 33.3. 3. And I like to incorporate the Hebrew understanding from uh, definitions in this particular passage says, call, the reading of the word, call, cry out. What does call mean? It means to cry out, to proclaim, to utter a loud sound. Who are we calling out to? We're calling out to our Father God. And what did he say in this passage? He said, when you cry out, proclaim, and utter a loud sound unto me, I will answer I will respond, answer means respond, and speak unto thee. He said, I will show or make known unto you great things. What are those great things? They're great in importance. They're great in intensity. They're great in number, large in magnitude and extent. He said, I will show thee mighty things. What are those mighty things? Mysteries and secrets, which we do not know, consider, perceive, see, or recognize at all. The Holy Spirit is an omnipotent, all-powerful. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere. He's om omniscient. What is that? all-knowing. He knows everything about every single individual in this place. He knows about every circumstance in you, in your life, in your family, where you work, where you shop, where you live. And he wants to help us, each and every one of us. Then when we go to Paul, the writing by the Holy Spirit through Paul in 1 Corinthians 14, 14 says, if I pray in an unknown tongue, that spirit praying church, Amen. to get spirit results, take spirit praying. If I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit by the Holy Spirit within me prays. But he tells us our mind is unproductive. It bears no fruit and it helps nobody. Then in James 5, 6, the earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. Pastor Philip, myself, and Jennifer, we want the power of God working in your life. We pray that you're hungry enough for the power of God and that you're doing the things that will cause the power of God to manifest in your life. We want greater manifestation in this church. Greater manifestation of what? greater manifestation of his power and his glory. So would you stand with me? Father God, we come into your throne room of mercy and grace and love. 
we come to you boldly, expecting results from our spirit praying. And with our understanding, we simply say, Father, we want greater manifestation of your glory. We want greater manifestation to the extent that when individuals come in this place, the revelation of truth is imparted unto them, that they have ears to hear, open mind, a receptive heart, and a will to walk in obedience to your holy written word. We want a greater manifestation in our nation and in our world. We want greater manifestation of your power within our homes, within our families, within our city. We want a greater manifestation throughout the body of Christ all over the world. So we now, with the Holy Spirit that dwells within us, we cooperate, Father, with you and your word and the Spirit to bring about spiritual results. As Greater in the gifts of the Spirit, Father. Subreste, the revelation gifts, the power gifts, the inspiration gifts. Zibreste, lebroso, lo danre tecamasta, le grista, le blogodonce terribrata, rodonce le macae seata usoto, robrate, eligdanste, gelmo loca, adenste, bre, lengodoso, dombrata. Nale de blogodeste, lady de Bahala, a lelo do ul granda, nigadanse, no more ulaya, a legadanste, elegate de bopapaha sasoto, ule patansta. Thank you for favor. We thank you for the favor that we have with our government. Ula braste, iligadasto, don regrabasta. We thank you, haha, the favor that we have in preparation of Robbie and his family to come and to join. To join with this body of believers. To presti caleste, zide de branda, to bumbo la canaste, ye ta on suman ni ange astuta, alina halusle, il brada sotong glaste, id de branda, kiston drumbre de la gadansti, ible gadanste blongo dosoton radasta. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Lord.